G'day Legends, Blake here with another video and today we're going to be talking all about heating those aquariums. Now I often get asked at what point I decided to heat the room instead of heating the aquariums because if you weren't aware this is how I heat all 50 plus aquariums in this fish room but it's not a decision that I made lightly and there's many many factors that might influence whether you decide to go this way or another way. Like most people, I used to always keep aquarium heaters like that one, or there's another one back there, in every single one of my tanks. But these days I only really do it in tanks like this discus tank, where it's gonna be a lot warmer than the rest of the room. And the hope is, is that by the end of this video, if you watch it all the way through, and I certainly hope you do, you'll know everything that can go into deciding whether or not to heat the room and the pros and cons to each way that there is to go. Now the most common place people start when setting up tropical aquariums is with aquarium heaters and I'm no different. I've got a whole big tub of them here from all different sizes, brands and types. Individual aquarium heaters are really quite good because these days they're very, very cost effective. They allow you to change each individual aquarium's temperature independent of any others in the room. They're really, really simple to set up and they don't take up much room, even if you're gonna store extras. However, that doesn't mean that they're foolproof. For example, you can see this little heater at the back of this tank here, and it's showing some signs that a fault is on the way. You can see some air bubbles in the top there. That means that uh, this guy isn't sealed up properly and it could be a ticking time bomb. Back when I used to run 15, 60 individual aquarium heaters, I'd find that I was often replacing them, like I will do this guy with this Inkbird aquarium heater here, and that they often have issues like being cracked, stopping working, or worst of all, sticking on and cooking your fish. There's absolutely nothing more heartbreaking than getting back to your aquarium and finding that it resembles more uh, fish soup than what you left it, a beautiful little ecosystem. Luckily, there is something that we can put in place to hopefully avoid this, and that is this little guy here, which is an Inkbird Aquarium uh, heater controller. Basically, you plug your heater into this instead of directly into the outlet. It has two little temperature probes that are gonna check the aquarium temperature and hopefully make sure that it doesn't go above a certain set temperature that you wanna put as your maximum. Now, of course, people have reported uh, faults with this as well, but for me, I like to put it on as an extra layer of protection, especially if you're heating up aquariums quite hot, like discus tanks and so forth, where your heater is gonna be off and on, off and on, off and on, all the time. Particularly in winter when your room is likely to be cold, that heater is gonna be working overtime trying to keep your tank nice and toasty. And like most things, the more time something is flicking on and off, the more potential there is for that process to fall apart. Here you can see this ink pet uh, heater here. So they're pretty, pretty simple. It's just a metal coil inside a glass tube and they come in different shapes and sizes and things like that. But that's the most basic heater that you're gonna find. Other issues that can present is broken glass, which can be really, really hard to get out of your aquarium and is quite dangerous to yourself and the fish whenever you put your hands in there. Um, but for the most part, uh, I've found that the biggest problem that I've run into is that the heaters just simply stop working and won't turn on. And when the heaters don't turn on, that can be a bit of an issue, but luckily it's a lot less dangerous than your heater sticking on and cooking your fish. Oftentimes it's just the next time you get around to some aquarium maintenance and you stick your hands in the tank, you realize it's cold and you quickly swap in one of your spare heaters that you have on hand. The other thing to consider is that whilst heaters are pretty inexpensive, when you're getting up until 40 and 50 units of them, that can add up pretty quick at about $30 a piece. And then typically what happens is people advance, they might have had five, 10 aquariums, they get to a point where they're starting to get 50, 60 aquariums, and they're just lining the walls of whatever space you're keeping your aquariums in. And that's when you might start to think about centralized heating or heating the room like my little uh, oil heater here. Now, there's a couple of methods you can employ when heating the room as well. There's a couple of downsides, and I don't think it's as simple as you get more aquariums, you then pull out the heaters and decide what temp your room's gonna sit at. Number one, I think the biggest benefit for heating the room versus heating the tanks is 
simply not having as many things plugged in. If you can remove 40 and 50 heaters, you can remove the need for dangerous uh, power strips or power boards, and you just have less things plugged in, which is kind of a reduced risk of fire. However, that does mean that you're running a split system aircon or a oil heater or panel heater for 24 seven, which doesn't eliminate the risk 100%. The second part to that is that you have one temperature that you can set it to. You can't set the left side of the room to 25 degrees Celsius and the right side to 30 degrees Celsius. It just doesn't work like that. And that's where you can run into issues if you want to keep axolotls at cooler temperatures and say discus at warmer temperatures. You'll also start to notice that the aquariums at the top of the room are quite a bit warmer than the aquariums at the bottom of the room. And that's why the axolotls are on the floor. And I think a lot of people overlook the fact that they might enjoy the fish tanks less and spend less time doing maintenance in a room that is gonna be hot and humid and difficult to work in. However, once you go to heating the room, there's absolutely zero risk of not knowing that the heat source isn't working, like I mentioned earlier, of putting your hand into a cold aquarium. Unfortunately, there has been two occasions where the power has tripped and my heater has turned off, and I come in here and it's freezing cold in winter. It's not something that you're gonna overlook, and you address it very, very quickly. However, the massive downside to that is, is that there's one source of uh, heat for the, every single aquarium. So when that goes down, it's a really, really big problem. The good news is that room heaters can be far more cheaper to run in large volumes in well insulated areas than individual heaters. Split system air conditioners, oil heaters, and some other forms of heating can be way, way uh, more efficient than aquarium heaters. So if your room is properly insulated, like you have things uh, like those green panels you might be able to see back there, uh, I've got on my garage door, if all your uh, window sills and door sills are well sealed up, if you've got heaps of water in the space, because water is quite a good insulator in itself. So let's say your aquariums take up 5%, 10% of the room, then you're gonna be in a good space that you'll see quite a lot of uh, savings on your electricity bills by heating the room instead. And if you've got a spouse or significant other that maybe isn't so supportive of your aquarium keeping habit, well, you can let them know that each uh, aquarium you set up from that point will only create further economies and further savings. Definitely omit the fact that you're gonna put a light on it and a filter on it and probably reduce all of those savings uh, and end up worse off. But we're gonna conveniently forget that and talk about how great it can be to fill up the room even more with boxes of water. So all in all, I don't think it's as simple a uh, question to answer that you get a certain number of tanks and that's when you decide to heat the room instead. I think it comes down to a few different things. Are you gonna be able to enjoy a space that's gonna be hot and humid? Are you likely to keep a bunch of different species of fish? Like maybe you wanna keep some temperate species and some tropical species and you're gonna need that variance in temperature. Well, that's part of the factoring that you might need to do. Is your space becoming dangerous having so many things plugged in and all the outlets taken up by power strips and power boards and you've got 42 things plugged into one power point and it's becoming a fire hazard? Absolutely, I think it's a time to consider heating the room. How insulated is your space and how much of that space is taken up by water or any other thing? And what is the likelihood of in the future adding more aquariums or reducing your aquariums because that also can factor into how efficient heating the room is gonna be. Hopefully this has helped you to answer some of your questions you might have about this topic. If you've got further questions, please let me know down below. I'd love to have some open discussions about it. Me personally, in my old fish room that wasn't heated, I did find that it was much more comfortable and especially in summer, I'd spend a lot more time out there However, I was constantly anxious about power outlets and the amount of things that I had plugged in. As well as that, I often found it disappointing to put my hand into a tank and get a little shock or find that it's really, really cold. I have found some power savings in terms of heating the room in this place. And I have found since heating the room that you do get more variance in temperature across the seasons and across the day. Now this might be able to be limited by further insulating the space 
However, I don't actually think it's a bad thing either for the fish to experience some set of seasonality and it hasn't seemed to hamper my ability to breed fish or the ability for the fish to appear happy and healthy. So in the end, I'm happy with my decision to heat the room. And I, although I wish that um, I would have a more economical to run system like a, a split system air conditioner, I believe personally that that's the best way to heat a room like this. However, just at the moment, I can't really afford to have that installed. So I'm going for the uh, oil heater. I do have a fan running and I do have a humidity uh, a dehumidifier and I find that works well enough to circulate the air to heat the space and uh, the fish all seem to be doing really well and that's the main thing. So hopefully you like this video. If you did it always helps me out to smash like hit subscribe and all that fun stuff and other than that I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.